All right, welcome to Math 090. Uh, in this section, we're going to talk about solving for a specified variable. Now, in one of the Math 060 videos, I give you a linear equation with just x's in it, and you had to solve for x. In this section, we're going to take an equation like this, with multiple variables in it, x, y, and z in this case, and I'm going to ask you to solve for one of those variables. <coughs> So let's give it a shot. Uh, let's start just by solving for x. Now this is similar to solving the linear equation in one variable. Uh, what we have to do is just kind of pretend that the y and the z in this case are constants, are just numbers. If we pretend that those are just numbers, then we can just solve this like we did in Math 06 up. Uh, the trick was getting the term with the x in it by itself on one side of the equation and putting everything else on the other side of the equation. So in order to get this uh, 2xy term, the term with the x in it, by itself on one side of the equation, we have to get rid of this 3z. And the way that we do that is we subtract 3z from both sides of the equation. When we do that, the 3z on the left-hand side of the equation cancels out. Then what we're left with is 2xy equals 4 minus 3z. And we just want to solve for x. Um, so x is multiplied by a 2 in this case, and it's also multiplied by a y. Uh, in order to get x by itself, uh, we'd have to get rid of that 2 and that y on the left-hand side of the equation. The way that we could do that is by dividing the left hand side by 2y. Anything we do to the left hand side, we have to do to the right hand side. So, so that's what we end up with. The 2's cancel on the left hand side, the y's cancel on the left hand side, and x is now by itself. x equals 4 minus 3z over 2y. Now if z and y were numbers like they were in math 060, um, we would have a number for an answer for x. In this case, y and z are variables. We don't know what they are. So that's our final answer. Let's take that same equation and let's try to solve it for the other variables, y, y and z. So let's solve it for y. Uh, I'm going to copy this down again. 2xy plus 3z equals 4. We want to solve it for y. Now the key is, to get all the terms with y in it on one side of the equation and everything else on the other side of the equation. Okay, so that shouldn't be uh, too hard. Again, the 2xy term is the term with the y in it, so we have to get the 3z uh, over to the other side of the equation. The way that we do that, we just subtract 3z from both sides of the equation, cancels out on the left, and we get 2xy equals 4 minus 3z. Now we're solving for y. We're, we're at the same point we were in the last problem, but now we're solving for y. So in order to get y by itself, what we're going to have to do is get rid of that 2 and that x. Uh, the 2 and the x are multiplying the y, so to get rid of it, we're going to have to divide. We divide both sides of the equation by 2x. On the left side, uh, the 2x is going to cancel out, and y is going to be by itself. On the right side, um, we're just dividing the 4 minus 3z by 2x. And that gives us our final answer. We get y by itself, uh, we get 4 minus 3z all over 2x. Now we can do the same thing for z. We can solve this equation, uh, the same equation for z. Okay. Same deal. We want to solve for z, so we want to get all of the terms that have a z in them on one side of the equation. There's only one term that has a z in it, it's that 3z. So we want to get that by itself on one side of the equation. That means we need to get rid of this 2xy from the left side. In order to do that, we're just going to subtract 2xy from the left side of the equation. Anytime we do anything to the left side, we have to do the same thing to the right side. So what we end up with 
So the two xy's cancel, and we get 3z all by itself. And we get 4 minus 2xy on the right side. Now we're almost there. We just want to solve for z. z is multiplied by 3 in this case, so we need to get rid of that 3. In order to do that, we can just divide by 3. Anything we do to the left side, we have to do to the right side. On the left side, the 3's are going to cancel, and that's just going to get z all by itself. And that's our answer. So there are an infinite number of equations that could be given to you, and uh, you could be asked to solve for a variable. I'll just give you another example of, of something that you could be given. Um, F equals say t minus m g. There's a, an equation for you, and I'd like you to solve it for g, little g. So give that a shot on your own, hit pause on your uh, video, and come back and see how you did. All right, let's do it. So, we want to solve for g, so we need to get all the terms with a g in them on one side of the equation. It looks like there's only one term that has a g in it, it's right there. So what we need to do, uh, we have a couple options, but what we can do is take this t and move it over to the other side of the equation. The way we do that is we just subtract t from both sides. So I'm just copying the equation down, and we're going to subtract t from both sides of the equation. The reason we do that is because the t's cancel from the right side, and we get left with just the term with g in it on the right side of the equation. On the left side, we just get f minus t. Now, we have all the terms that have a g in it on one side by themselves. What we need to do is get g by itself. Um, g is multiplied by negative m. So in order to get g by itself, in order to reverse that negative m multiplication process, we have to divide by negative m. You'll see when we do that, the negative m's are just going to cancel, and g is going to be by itself on the right side. But we have to do the same thing to the left side that we do to the right side, so we have to divide that by negative m as well. Negative m's cancel from the right side, and we get g by itself. That's what we were trying to do. What's left on the left side is f minus t over negative m. And there's your answer. In the next video, we're going to talk about exponents and properties of exponents.